installing your Stuff and Things Steez On Kit for the KUSA KP9. Hi, Will here with Stuff and Things, and I just want to thank you for your purchase of your brand new Bizon or Steezon conversion kit for your KUSA KP9. In this video, we're going to be going over how to install that kit uh, in detail. Uh, it's very similar to the other kits that you may have seen, like the PSA AKV, with a couple differences, namely uh, with the forward end of the handguard and with the magwell. But before we get into all of that, let's have a look inside the box. So if we open it up, lift that foam out of the way, and ooh, so pretty. We have our aluminum handguard. We have a bag of a flash hider, your magazine catch, and an extra pin for your uh, magwell. We have a couple of stickers and some papers, and then we have the magazine itself, of course. Now, let's set these aside and get into the real meat and potatoes of how to install your kit in your KP9. First step, of course, is to remove the magazine and to make sure that our firearm is not loaded and is clear. Now, we need to take some of the guts out of the gun, and to do that, we're going to flip it up like this, and note this little button right here on the back of the receiver slash dust cover. We're gonna push in on that as far as we can, and lift up that dust cover just like that. Now we're gonna push on the same button, in and pull up, and we can remove our spring, set that off to the side, and our bolt. And remove the bolt, we just slide it all the way to the rear and lift up. Set that off to the side as well. And now we're gonna take off the handguard. And to do that, we're going to unlock it by flipping that lever up, just like that, and pulling up on the upper handguard. This can be a little tricky. You may need a tool just to help pry, but that'll pop right off. We actually don't need this for the Bison kit, so we can just set that aside. And now to the lower handguard, we do have a little lever right there that we're gonna flip forward, all the way forward. And that's gonna allow us to move our retaining plate all the way forward as well. Again, this may be a little bit stiff. KUSA uh, has some very tight tolerances on their pieces, which is a good thing. So we're just gonna move that uh, ret uh, forward retaining plate all the way forward. And now we can pull on our handguard towards the muzzle and just pull it down, just like that. There's our handguard. We don't need that for our conversion kit, so we can set that off to the side as well. Now, the KUSA KP9 is, <laughs> uh, is the easiest to install our uh, Bison or Stezon handguards. It's very, very simple. You just slide that handguard over the barrel, and there's these little fins right here. You wanna make sure those fins go inside that receiver pocket. Just like that, Put them all, push them all the way back. Now just slide that forward retaining plate to the rear. I might need to change my angle here. There we go. Slide that forward retaining plate all the way to the rear and then flip our lever back. I like to use a little tool like a screwdriver just to make sure it goes back all the way. And it should stay on its own. Ta-da, handguard installed. This is the trickiest part of the entire process because we are going to need to drill out that rivet right there. The rivet closest to the trigger. That guy right there. I'm just gonna be very clear on this. That rivet right there. Not that one, that one. <laughs> so uh, let's just take it over to the drill press. It's very, very simple. So the KP9 is actually a rivet and a washer. We only have to drill out the rivet itself. So use that little dimple to center up your drill bit. Use a drill press or a hand drill if you're skilled enough and just drill out the rivet, the inside part until you hit the edge of the inside edge of the washer. You don't have to go all the way through. All right, so with our rivet uh, drilled out, we can just tap that pin with a punch or a similar long tool. Get rid of that rivet, we don't need it anymore. And we can just pull down. You kind of have to wiggle it. It's a sort of down and back action. And we can take off our magwell. Now, here's a cool thing about the KUSAs. The mag catch that comes with the KUSA will actually work with your 
Stezon magazine. So if you want to use that one instead of using ours, cool, go for it, man. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta already have a mag catch right there. Anyway, we don't need this, so I'm gonna set that aside, and we can put uh, our magazine catch in the gun. All right, so just open up your bag. I already have one opened, uh, but you are gonna need your little mag catch bag, which will have a couple pieces in it. It's gonna be a spring, a slave pin, the mag catch itself, our regular, uh, our standard mag catch uh, pin, and e-clip, just like that. So what we're gonna do is if you notice on this spring, there is a long arm over here and a short arm over here. We're gonna put that short arm inside the mag catch, just like that. Short arm up, sort of make an L shape in there, just like that. Use a slave pin, a little plastic piece here, stick that in and make sure that we can get it all the way through and that it is, oh, come on, buddy, flush on both sides. Don't let it fall out. And we're going to install the mag catch this way. And what we're gonna do, this is a little bit tricky, we actually need to push the end of that spring against the inside of the magazine catch area. Oh, sorry, I forgot a step. There's a little block in there. Let's get rid of that guy. Get out of here, block. We don't need him. Anyway, back to this. We're gonna stick it in there and we're actually gonna sort of almost rock it into place, keeping tension on that arm and sliding that mag catch up just like that. Now take your pin and we're gonna stick it in here right over top of that slave pin. Let the slave pin fall out the bottom. And this part you may, may require some wiggling, may require some, uh, just some finagling or just some brute force. I find that brute force is A, the most fun and B, sometimes the most effective. With our pin all the way in, we can flip it over. We can see the end of our pin exposed there. Take our E-clip and just slide it right over. I like to use a little screwdriver just to snap it in place. Pop, perfect. That's gonna hold our pin in place. Uh, make sure you give the magazine a, like a snap or two just to ensure that the spring is uh, seated all the way inside there. All right, uh, that is pretty much it except for our flash hider, which is uh, very cool. I didn't have the KUSA flash hider on here. It's very simple. You push in on that plunger and just do lefty loosey, righty tighty. Take off your K KUSA flash hider and screw on ours. Righty tighty. Now we are gonna get to the point where we hit that plunger and notice that I can't spin it anymore. Oh no. We're gonna to need to use an object like a screwdriver or a pin or a punch or something so that we can push in on that little plunger. It's kind of hard to do at this weird angle on the camera. Hope you can see it. And push in until it's tight, then just kind of back off until it pops into place. And that's it. Now we can assemble the gun by doing the bolt installation just in reverse of what we already did. So you take that bolt, put the front end through this hole right here, drop it in. Note there are little cuts in the back of the receiver and little uh, matching wings here on the back of the bolt. We just drop those wings in there and push it forward. Slide it all the way forward, very simple. Now we take our spring, stick it in the back of the hole on the bolt, push it in, and lock it into the, whoops, again, difficult to do at this angle. Uh, make sure it locks into the little slots in the back of the receiver. All right, and this is my favorite part. You just close the dust cover and give it a good smack. Make sure that that button sticks out through the dust cover. And there we go. We have a fully assembled Stezon uh, kit ready to go. Oh, let's make sure that we flip down our handguard uh, little lever right there. And there we go, all set. Now, in order to load the magazine, it's very simple. We just use that forward catch right there, insert it into the forward retaining plate, and then rock it in so, whoops, so that the back of the magazine goes in the mag well, and just give it a good smack. Make sure it locks in place. Now, as with all stamp metal AKs, uh, the tolerances are never going to be exact from one gun to another. So some fitting may be required in that mag catch. You may need to shave a little bit off of the top. Uh, that is gonna to be 
specifically this surface here, you may need to shave that down a little bit. Uh, I'm talking a very small amount. If you have some uh, files, a Dremel, a grinder, uh, that'll just don't, don't take too much off. A little bit at a time and then check for fitment. Uh, obviously, if you don't have those tools, you can remove a little bit off of the bottom of the magazine. We really, really, really don't recommend it because if you take too much off, you've compromised the whole mag. But we understand that some people don't have these tools and all they have is maybe an X-Acto knife and need to shave some plastic off. Do what you gotta do, but highly recommend doing that modification on the magwell instead. All right, so actually, as far as loading the magazine goes, let's just cut over to the PSA video and see how to load your Stizon magazine. Okay, to load this magazine, first thing I'm gonna do is remove the firearm because I don't want anything to happen to me or anyone helping me film. So now with this magazine, uh, it does have some writing on it. This is, this is a production magazine, but one that I've been using for demonstrations. Um, but note, we have some followers inside that uh, feed neck there. We have a neat little lever back here. We have a neat little twisty cap right here. Yes, that is the correct nomenclature. That is the technical name of that, uh, that device. We're the first people to use it, so we get to call it whatever we want. Twisty cap. <laughs> so I do want to point out right now that this magazine is not user serviceable. If you take these uh, screws out, it is possible that you can lift the cap off and take off all the tension on your springs. These magazines will come to you pre-tensioned, all ready to go. If it happens to you accidentally, no big deal. Give us a call, give us an email, or shoot us an email. We'll walk you through how to get everything back up and running. But it's best if you just don't take it apart in the first place. But let's load it up by twisting the twisty cap. Now as I twist that cap, watch as the followers will go down inside the magazine. We hold it sort of this way. Each click is one round. Whoop, there we go. So each time I turn that, you'll hear the click of the ratchet, and you can't actually see the lever snapping each time the ratchet goes past it. Cool. I don't actually want to go that far. What I usually do is, just go right back here, is I'll take those followers down three clicks to when the follower just disappears inside the magazine. And then you can take a round and drop it in, just like that. One, two, three. And then use that twisty cap again to turn your magazine. One, two, three. Put some more rounds in. One, two, three. Turn that twisty cap again. One, two, three. You get the idea. Now, if you want to take the tension off, you can just push on the top of that lever or when you put it in the gun, that lever will bump up on the uh, bottom side of the receiver and do it automatically. That takes the tension off of your magazine and allows that ratchet to be free and allows the rounds to freely feed up into the magwell. It's pretty simple, but one thing I do want to point out, and I, you will see this, uh, I'll go over this again in a shooting demonstration. Uh, this round, I can't push this round down, and that's because that spring is under, uh, it's under torsion, not compression like a standard box magazine. So the standard box magazine, I can put the round in and push down on it, like that. Can't do it on this magazine, and that means when I go to load this in the gun, that uh, round is gonna hit the bottom of the bolt and not allow me to load the magazine. So it's highly recommended that you download your magazine by at least one click. I usually go three clicks so that the round is completely on the inside of the magazine. And that will give you 55 rounds with uh, this configuration. Obviously you can get to 58 if you have them all uh, topped up. But if that's the case, then when you insert the magazine, you are gonna have to have the bolt to the rear, put the magazine in and then release the bolt. Not recommended, uh, not a good habit to get into. So why don't you just keep it downloaded to 55 there. Uh, and that is really all there is to these mags. It's a slightly different uh, manual of arms, I guess you want to call it. It's a slightly different loading process than a standard box magazine. But, you know, once, you, once you've uh, done it a couple times, you get pretty used to it. Now, there's a couple little quirks I do want to point out. Um, just due to the nature of the helix on the inside, uh, sometimes you will have to have the magazine tilted upward like this 
for the rounds to really feed in. They will come out at any angle, any orientation. They'll feed out, no problem. But loading it, they can be a little finicky. So just, you know, sometimes you have to have it rocked forward. Most of the time, if you just give it a little shake, everything kind of sets uh, into place and the rounds will go in there, no problem. Now we're ready to actually load the mag. So again, using that forward retaining plate, put the forward end of the magazine in and just give it a good old shove right up into the mag well. Make sure that your magazine catch does engage the back of the magazine, just like that. You wanna have it sticking out. If the magazine catch looks like this, you're not in all the way. So make sure that we've got it all the way engaged. And you're good to go, man. From here on out, it's just like shooting any other AK. Rock and roll, baby. All right, I hope that was very helpful. Uh, one last thing I want to point out, we did just demonstrate this on the KUSA KP9. It's gonna, the loading sequence is gonna be the same on all of the platforms that we've designed these mags for, the AKV, the KP9, KR9, and the 9S and the NAC9. So, thanks for watching and enjoy your Stizom, baby.